Hey guys, this is Jen from Scan and Cut Canvas and Scout Help on Facebook. Alright, this is a new Shortcuts A Lot 5 program, but I'm going to run it just like Shortcuts A Lot 4. Um, I'm not going to really be using anything that's in the new 5. This is going to be just like the 4. Okay, um, I'm going to do, this is an on the fly. I have a brand new, to me, uh, PR655 embroidery machine because my PE770 literally ate anything that I put in it um, so I needed to upgrade um, and when my grandma passed away uh, she left me enough money to buy this so uh, that's what I did um, <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna be creating uh, my file in shortcuts a lot and then I'm going to be taking it to in brilliance uh, to uh, Create the embroidery file and I want to show you how I easily do this and yes Some people say oh it looks like it takes more time The reason it looks like it takes more time is because I actually have to create a video So I have to tell you all of the steps and show all the steps and maybe explain it a little more so that people that are watching this understand it but when I do this it literally takes me about two minutes to do it um, so creating key fobs is so easy it's sickening all right so let me figure out what I'm gonna be doing next well I'm over here working away and forgetting to record this sorry okay so I have um, I need to make a set of barn keys um, and what I tend to do is I tend to need to make uh, the fobs large so that they won't get lost or misplaced. Um, so any keys that uh, get used by any males in this house need to be placed on a large, brightly colored key fob so they, <clears throat> excuse me, do not get lost <clears throat> or misplaced or left laying out in the yard, uh, left to the dogs to chew on. Um, so I want to make this kind of big. Un <clears throat> Excuse me. Understand that if you're making this, size it to whatever size you feel appropriate. Um, most of my key fobs end up around six to eight inches long and about four to six inches wide. Yes, I know that's huge, but it is a requirement here in my household full of males and dogs. Okay, um, so here's a barn one. Uh, this will actually be what the stitch file is going to be this will be a full stitch file okay what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up here to effects I'm going to grab the shadow layer okay I'm gonna click blackout shadow let that work okay and I'm gonna inflate it or fluff it up once okay so that will be fine okay so this will be the stitch file what I need with this shadow layer, this is going to be what the outside bean stitch is going to be. Okay, so the outside outline, that is what that is going to be. Okay, so however far away I want that, that is how much I am going to make that shadow layer. Okay, so that looked good to me. That's where I'm going to put it. So that's what that's going to look like, okay? It doesn't ever look like that lines up correctly. I'm sorry, but that does not look centered to me. I think there's something off there a little bit. It's a little hanky to me. That looks centered. That just does not look right. See? I don't know about that. It does not look right. Okay, so now I need to create the tab that's going to go on this bean stitch file. That's what I already have up here, but I, of course, was working without thinking about you guys. I'm so sorry. So now I need to create the tab. Well, to do that, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab this little guy. And I'm going to click twice and that's going to flip it. And I pull it. Remember, you can always cut the tabs off, but you cannot ever make them longer. So let's try this positioning tool here. 
Okay, so that says that it is directly in the center of this. Okay, that's all good and fine, but I'm going to drop it down a little bit right there. Okay, that looks good. Because what you're going to do is you're going to bend this in and put your little uh, snap tab in there. Okay, I am also going to get rid of that little mark. I just don't like it. You can do whatever you like, but I just don't like it there. I like things equal. Okay, so I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to path union it. Okay, so there's that. And that's going to be the bean stitch. Okay, so that looks about equal. Object, arrange, bring to front. So that looks good to me. Okay, so not only do I have this so this is my full stitch file this will be my bean stitch file okay what else do i need i need my cut file okay so this is going to be my send to embrilliance svg file but i also need my cut file that i am going to cut on my scan and cut okay hmm how am i going to get my cut file easy you know, highlight all this come up here to effects we're going to get another shadow layer Okay, I'm going to change this color. That's where the blue comes in. Okay, so we're going to do okay. Let's get our cut file. You can have that. So this blue is actually going to be what your material looks like. Okay, so the blue is your material. Your gray will just be the outline. Okay, so that outline is going to be what your stitch file, your little bean stitch, so that running stitch. That's what that's going to look like. And then the black part is going to be what your actual stitch file looks like. Okay. I may actually add some words in here too. Not quite sure yet. Like maybe don't lose me or something like that. Okay. But this is what it will look like. If you're okay with that, then go ahead and click okay. Or, you know, enter some numbers in there. Oh, uh, no, not, not a fan of that. There's two. You know what? I like that because... My family is a tad bit rough on things, so having as much material is good. So I'm going to click OK. But you know what? If I come up here, and let's say I put it in here to size it. If I'm not comfortable, gosh darn it, John. If I'm not comfortable with that size, as it is all together, I can resize it. Okay. If I want to make it sit at just under three inches, I can do that because right now it is all together. So I am resizing it all together. Bump it up there. I see over here that I am still safely in the positive. So I'm not going over the edge of my mat. All right. So right now that sits just under three inches and just under eight inches, but the tab is fully extended. Okay. So if I come over here at the tab closed, I am slightly over five inches. So to me, that's I'll be good to go with that one. I don't think my family's going to lose that. The keys to the little scash house. Oh my God, that thing is huge and it's made out of neon green. Okay, so I think I'm good to go with this. So to break this down, I'm going to pull off just these top two, okay? <clears throat> now I need to send this to a new page. So I'm going to create the new page here. I'm going to click OK. And because I'm working in Shortcuts a Lot 5 regular, we do not any longer have the send layer to page in here or send to page layer, whatever that's called. I never remember the name of it correctly. So what I have to do is I have to copy I have to come over here and I have to paste it okay and I have to come back here and delete it those of you that just upgraded from shortcuts a lot for let's go to shortcuts a lot for and use that all right don't sweat it okay so now I know that this is my cut file this is my right reading portion so I'm gonna set this down here because this will be cut out of the backing material right reading is the back 
because I always cut mine because I like to use the glitter stuff and all that crazy stuff but I always cut it with the smoother side down towards my mat we all know with that uh, marine vinyl it has the kind of like a uh, fabric material type you don't really want to put that on your mat because it doesn't really like to stick that smoother grippy side put that on your mat that likes to stick okay so I put that on my mat well with that colored side facing your mat how are you going to cut it exactly the right reading side with the color facing your mat the right reading side will be cut out of your backing material when you come up and you do your duplicate so let's get my duplicate and I'm gonna do a one this one is going to be cut out of my top material so I must mirror it okay so there's my top piece there's my bottom backing piece so this one will always be mirrored if you happen to forget yes you can do it when you get to the machine that is not a problem if you watch my original key fob video you'll see me do it on the machine in there okay um I think that's about it let me get rid of this or when I send this to my machine I'll scream at myself let's delete this I got my stick in here so let me send this one to my stick export there's my Adobe files let's do scan and cut you see all my ones that I was making yesterday what's this one this is the barn cut okay so now let's go deal with this Majabi okay so I am going to leave it just like that. However, I think I'm going to come in here and I am going to, for this back gray piece, I am going to come in here and, oops, wrong one, Jennifer. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn off the color for that one. I'm going to leave the outline on. Um, yeah, I'll leave the outline on this one let's fill that with some type of color I'm not sure what I want to do I think maybe I'll wait to add a font when I actually get to program okay let's move this bad boy up here and let's export this export not to my drive we're gonna come and stick this in my embroidery projects and we'll do barn okay and I'm also going to be doing some uh, dog collars okay so now let's start up in brilliant okay and I got my huge mambo jumbo uh, whatever that's called yeah the hoop okay doesn't really matter I have one of those oh uh, well, let me see let me read it it's called a fast frame so you can basically plug in any one you want doesn't really matter all right I'm gonna pause this because this is taking forever welcome to stitch artist unfortunately I'm not made of money so I can't afford all of the embroidery programs that we use uh, so I use in brilliance and this is stitch artist um, so yes uh, we're gonna come up here and open barn um, let's grab no, hang on. gotta come in here grab this come to vector and grab barn okay so here's my little barn I'm um, gonna just click on this big piece I'm going to come up here and this is the fill because I want to fill it okay and it's select it's set to basket which is what I want you can come in and set all of your properties come in and adjust your underlayment okay um, you can adjust let me see you can your little 
if you want to adjust the different types of how your stitches set and sway if you want to adjust that you do that by adjusting these little guys right here half the time those things irritate the crap out of me and sometimes you can set some pretty cool uh, looks with them Most of the time they throw in unwanted lines. Okay, let me bring my stop down here. Throw my start over here. Okay, and a lot of times I go in here and I start removing nodes. It is just a quirk that I have. I hate node-heavy files. I don't know. Uh, also, I've noticed that it really helps sometimes with how uh sometimes it helps with how these lines lay if you notice something is looking a little odd it will actually help the way those lines look okay so this looks pretty good um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in here and start to build what my file looks like and how it stitches out so i'm going to start and work my way around so there's the start and the stop there. So now I'm going to come here and just go working around there. So there's the start. I'm going to move my stop over here. Put this one and fill this one. I need to move my green start down here where that one stopped. Click this one. There. I'm going to move my stop right up here because then I'm going to jump to this one and it covered it right on up there did you see that did you see it did you see it so now I need to come in here and find it it's the line and I need to trim that out well technically I don't but I do I need a eraser tool in this thing and I know there's this right here where you can break it and stuff like that I have not used this enough because um, I've been busy with a gajillion other things um, but I would really love a square eraser <laughs> so I could just go in and erase it I'm so used to working in shirt cuts a lot but uh, I know I need to get in here and start using this a lot more than I have um, so what I could do, uh, actually, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to change colors, and I will put this in a little, maybe I'll do a little comma. No, that's not what I want. I need that. That is not what I want. I want a border. A little border no 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 see I'm not paying attention I want this one I need to bring this one all the way down here Come on, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, so now I can go with this one. I'm gonna do a little fill. And then this one. And this one. This one. And a little fill. And I think that's all of them, isn't it? Oh crap, can't see it. Yeah, I think that's it. Mm-hmm. 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 
Mm. Is that going to let me do that? Is it? Yeah, it is. But I need to change the color to red. Okay. No, that was dumb. I need to change the color to black because every other thing is going to be red. This mouse in me, this keyboard, it has mind of its own. If it ever behaved, I don't know if it's the light or what it is. It jumps all over the place. Yeah. Now stay where you were. <laughs> Look at it. It just has mind of its own. I swear to goodness. And what I'm trying to do is highlight all of these. And it just gets crazy. Well, I'll come back when I get this thing to work right. Holy goodness. There we go. It finally worked. Yes, it was the light. Okay, so that's what we have so far. I almost feel like I should have a border running around there that it doesn't look right, but that's what I have so far. So now I need to take this and move this last, okay, and what should we make that? I'll probably just make that black too. Let's change that make this black well you know what it helps if you apply a function to it Jennifer we'll do it being three pass we'll do 3.5 okay let's see what color that comes out what color does this give me I don't want gray I want black. Hopefully it's up here. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. So there we go. And let's change where that starts. There. So it's a little happier right there. Okay. There we go. All right. So now that is ready to be sent. No, I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. I want to add a basting box to it. Come on. Because what this does, what the basting box does, is that actually tells me where I'm going to lay my cutout key fob. Okay, where I'm going to lay my little cutout piece. So it's actually going to extend slightly over this basting box. And that's going to be okay because I know I'm going to have a little bit sticking out here, a little bit here, and a lot bit right here, and a little bit there. So if I'm equal in all these parts, my sewing should actually be okay. And what I'm going to do when I get to the camera aspect of this I'm going to show you, based on this stitch out, okay, what's going to happen is I'm going to lay that fob. This internal stitching part is going to stitch first, okay? And because with my new machine, I can stitch this first and then put a, it's called a, I think it's called a reserve stop or something. I don't know. I got so addicted to doing this that I made the old man work on most of the house himself and I sat inside the little house <laughs> sewing these out 
But I didn't have to sit here and watch it. It was so nice. My little machine would start going da ding da ding da ding when it would hit the reserve stop so I could come in and actually load the bottom piece. It was so nice. So it'll stitch out this top piece and then it'll give me a little ding telling me that it hit the reserve stop, which means it's going to stop after it sews this piece so that I can come in slap my 505 on the back piece and stick it on there and then allow it to sew out the bean stitch part attaching the back piece to it and then I can pull the stuff apart and have my key fob okay guys all right so the next part and I'll attach all of it it's not a part one and a part two I finally smartened up and got a program that allows me to stick them together like glue Oh, if you need to see how to do it, I just come here, I save stitch file, USB drive, oh crap, should have just typed B-A-R-N, barn, and I hit enter, and I will show you how to cut out uh, the fobs on the scan and cut in the camera part. Okay, so there are my two files, okay right there so the uh, incorrect reading for the uh, this is the black glitter uh, vinyl so the incorrect reading for the uh, top piece and then the correct reading for the bottom piece all right so I have both of these face down on my mat understand that if you have vinyl that is not the same thickness you will set it for the thickness of the thinner uh, vinyl do two cuts do not try to cut this all at once what you're going to do is you're going to carve up your vinyl more than likely um, I only use zig zig tack mats um, and I tend to make a double cut so I'll cut through it halfway and then deepen my blade and double cut it um, if I have the thinner like the neon colors those tend to be thinner or the white backing let me see if I can grab a piece of it uh, the really thin especially like this neon green okay this has the white backing this is very thin this is the thick stuff I lucked out and got two that are generally the same thickness but if I were to cut like this and this this is at least half as thick as this so I go after this first cut it I would remove this I would come up here I would delete the file then recut that okay so I would come up here set my blade I would capture this if this if this white piece was set for my top piece I would capture this so I cut this out successfully I would remove this from my mat I would remove that from my screen okay come back in and go after that one deepen my blade and cut that piece really easy to do but these are both the same thickness so I'm gonna set my blade and I was cutting this all day yesterday, having a blast cutting this. Okay. Um, understand that when I use this, uh, because I use this all the time, so very frequently, I do place my hands right on the vinyl as the blade is moving and as it goes in here. I do not recommend anyone else do that unless you use your machine all the time. Understand how it moves, understand how it cuts. You can get your fingers sucked in here. You can seriously injure yourself if you do that. Um, so I don't recommend it. I actually will not show myself doing that because I don't recommend it to anybody, okay? Um, but if you feel comfortable doing that, uh, you can. My cut pressure, oops, sorry. <laughs> My cut pressure is a minus one. People think that they have to crank up their pressure. Don't do that. The only thing you're doing is ruining your blades and ruining your mats and possibly ruining your machine. Uh, there is no reason to crank that pressure up. When you crank that pressure up, what you're doing is you are shoving that material around. You're just going to wad that material up and ruin your cut. Okay? So you're just costing yourself money when you do that. All right, so let's hit start. Okay? 
Um, I'm guessing at the uh, cut area on this, I may uh, not have guessed it right, so we'll see. Dagum flies in here are terrible. Alright, so let's take a peek at this. Oh, that one did actually cut out. Yep. So I have a successful cut on this one. I know. This bottom one? Okay. This was designed to show you what not to do. Okay? You do not ever want to put a file so close to the edge. This one cut out very well because it was positioned more in the middle okay this one came down here and it caught that edge and it rolled it okay that is not anything that you ever want to do you don't ever want to position anything right towards the edge so that it catches that all right now I'm going to come in here and actually use my fingers to position this so I can capture that correct cut file so I am going to turn this off Okay, so there we have our cut file. Now we're going to take it to our machine and start to embroider. And for those of you that have like the multi-needles, you understand and appreciate these things. Um, these are fast frames, which I did not understand anything about them until I got them. And holy cow! Oh, I'm in love. No more breaking my fingers and you know, needing to kneel on my knees on salt uh, for 12 hours because I've sworn. Um, these things, it just takes some sticky back adhesive and I think this might <laughs> might even be uh, that. I don't, I, I ordered some. I didn't have any on hand. Um, so I've just been using this because this is what I had and I've also been using just the regular tear away with 505. Um, but just put this down. I mean, it literally is just this easy. I never realized how fun embroidery could be because that seven, oh, that 770 of mine was horrible. Anything I put under it, it would eat it. And I'm talking eat it bad. And I took it down to Debbie's with me. Now, of course, because I'm recording this, nothing is working right. But I took it down when I did my class, and Dennis took a look at it and said it was only thread. Oh, no, 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 no. There's got to be more than that, because that thing was eating everything for months. Nothing was working. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this over to the machine, and I don't want to do anything with these yet, because I'm going to put the basting box in there. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so here we are on the new machine. All right, so I have my USB stick set in here. I want to show you something, okay? So here I have this. You've seen the smaller size frame that I just fixed up, right? Let me show you something. Here's the size of this, okay? So close. Because I have that frame on here, there's no sensors built into that. Okay, so there's no warning that's going to tell me, Jen, you're going to sew in this metal. Okay, but watch. So there's that. Okay, so I'm going to stick this doohickey on here. The only thing that saves me is something that I do while I'm learning because I literally just started sewing on this two days ago okay so that's put in here sorry I have that really crappy uh, tripod out here and I'm probably gonna end up breaking it okay there's this little box right here all right so I'm gonna push that little box watch what happens okay there's that little red dot. Oh, look. It's telling me it is going to hit that metal. 
that tells me that I have to pull that off and get the bigger one. That is why no matter what I do, I always tend to use this bigger frame for pretty much everything. It doesn't matter what I do, I slap that bigger frame on everything. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that up for us. Okay, yes, I do have what is called a reserve stop after that. So I'm going to click that. All right, and that's going to allow me to stop. Oh, I hate this camera stand. I'm going to have to go get the good one. Um, I'm going to, it's going to allow me to stop after it stitches that basting box. Let me focus this. It's terrible. Okay, so I'm going to hit the stuff to start it, and it's going to go ahead, and it's going to stitch that out. If that dadgum, what's that thing he called underneath there? Yay, it caught. No, it didn't. I always have trouble getting that thingy to catch. Maybe I need to read the instruction manual and see how to do that. Grabbing it and giving it a yank helps. Okay. Now it's going to give me a little tune. That tune tells me that now I need to grab my top. Oop. Helps if I don't throw everything all over the daggum place. Now I need to grab my top piece. Okay, and position it. Now I know I need to leave a little bit hangover on each side. So I need to position it just so. Okay. Okay. I think that should be good. Thinking and hoping are things I do a lot of because it's not guaranteed to work it may be off but this is for me so that's okay I don't care okay so now I should switch to red and it should be on but it may be a little off because I'm slightly off <laughs> but we'll see how it goes So far, so good. Not too bad. And what you want to do is, even if you have to take, you know, your hoop off and put it back on, just be careful. You know you don't want to move it too much, all right? But technically, I would have taken lots of time to be careful to position it just so. You want to make sure the equal parts overhang that basting box if need be, okay? But with the camera being positioned where it was, I didn't really have that choice. But it is what it is. All right, so I'm going to let this stitch out, and I'll come back when that part is finished. I'm using, actually, Embroidex um, thread. Uh, I use Embroidex and Metro threads. And those seem to really do well in this. Um, they also did really well in my 770. Um, I only use the needles. Where the heck? The organ needles. Some people ask, so I figured I'd better throw that in here too. Um, I haven't replaced any of the needles in this yet because I've only used it for two days. Okay, it just indicated again that... It is now going to do the black, all right? So what I need to do is I'm going to remove this. I'm going to spray this piece with my 505. Then I'm going to stick it to the underside of this, okay? I'm going to replace this back into the machine and then let it start stitching. I'm going to carefully make sure that this remains stuck to the bottom though. Because what I don't want is it to stitch and then, oh, this falls off and then it catches and it stitches like this, okay? So I'm going to pause this as I go spray all this, all right? I have my trusty freezer paper. I give it a good shot. Now 
Now I hold this up in the air and compare it in the light to make sure that it is even. So hold this up directly in the light to make sure that it is even. If it is not, make sure that it is even. So fix it. Don't hope that the machine will change and stitch somewhere that it's not going to. Mm, yeah, that looks good enough. Now, if this was for a customer, I'd be a little bit more finicky. But it's not. It's for us, so I'm not too picky. Alright, so now it's ready to go. There's the front, and there's the back. Okay. So now I'm going to go stuff it back in the machine. This is so easy. It really does just go like this. It's got a thumb screw or a big fat whatever you want to call it screw. Come up here, push lock, and go. And it's going to sew that piece, which I'm not too worried about, but normally nothing shows on my back except for the bean stitch. But that piece will show. And that's so unlike me, but I forgot. So if this was for a customer, I would go back into Embrilliance and I would split this file up. So I would create a different file. Or create a, a, a color break. So this would sew differently separately from that black piece. So that's going to sew and then it's going to sew the bean stitch and then it's going to be done. So I'll come back when it gets to that bean. Okay, now it's to the last one, that final bean stitch. And you see it's going around those edges nicely. Okay, so my guess was pretty smack on for the placement. And that's got the three pass bean stitch so it's going ahead and it's doing its job all right guys this was just an on the fly video uh, trying to give you any you know help for your key fobs um, I am gonna go ahead and finish this for you showing you how to use the cam snaps <laughs> the last the very first fob video I did I had never used them before um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the video with that. But this is the final stitches um, with embroidery. Uh, hopefully this helps you. Again, the on-the-fly videos are done for just that. Um, but this is such an easy way to do this. Utilizing shortcuts a lot, utilizing in brilliance, your, your programs, it is just so easy to do this. So hopefully this helped you. So here's this finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the kids that I put a safety tag in there. <laughs> but there's the back. Here's the front. It's really pretty. I use a basket. You've seen I use a basket stitch on that. It's really pretty. But that's what that is. Normally, I would eliminate this so it would just be the bean stitch on the back. That was a boo-boo on my part. I did not catch that when I saved the file. So all of your stuff... We'll just have that bean stitch eliminate that. Okay, so now let's place the, the actual keychain part on there. Okay, so you got this little like all. Just take it. Oh crap. Put your little key thingy on here. Hang on. I know I'm out of the range because I got too much crap sitting in front of me. Let's thread it on there. And then take your awl and punch it. Big hole in there. I usually take it all the way down. And then you're going to grab two of those cam snap sides. So you have one side and then another side. Okay. So one end is a snap, the any, and then the receiver. 
and you're gonna put one side on and like I said uh, Mikri I think that's the name of it at least that's how it's spelled put one side on this way and then the big round side goes in the round part and then you just put it on and squeeze Okay, and then that little end, you probably can't see it, no. The little end flattens out. And then you're going to take the other side, put it on this way. If you don't want this to come apart, to come unsnapped, just take your sewing machine and run a stitch through there. Or, you know, stitch it shut then. If you don't want to use these snaps, that's all you got to do. Okay, and that way. And then you can snap it shut and there you go there's your little snapped fob and you are done with your pretty little key fob so if I wasn't doing this in a video and I just worked straight through it it would probably take me from start to finish maybe 10 minutes okay to do these it does not take long at all and if you didn't have any uh, interruptions with your dogs, your kids, your old man, um, it might take you, if you already had a file made up, oh goodness, it might take you five minutes, okay? Um, they don't take long to make. If you are your own independent file maker, that's what adds time to it, okay? Um, but these are so much fun to make. But I wanted to update the video. Um to help all of you. All right, guys, have fun. This is so much fun. Thanks. Oh, yeah, and if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me over at Scan and Cut Canvas and Scout Help on Facebook. That's the only place that you will find me. Um, I don't advertise uh, anywhere. I don't, you know, pretend to know everything about everything. I teach people about the Scan and Cut Canvas and Scout. All right, guys, have a good one.